Hello. <clears throat> Hello. I'm audible. Hello. Let us start. It's okay. <clears throat> Hello, good evening, our dear student. Hello, 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 <clears throat> hello. Good evening, our dear students. Myself, Dr. Silen. So, let us understand today uh, about the covalent modification of the stone. You know, uh, there is a the stone activation modification, right? So how the histone is uh, going to be modified? That is a major question I am going to discuss today. Uh, this is uh, un in continuation with the study lecture, covalent modification. Because uh, it is a part of developmental biology, it is part of transcription, it is part of gene expression, it is part of so many processes. So uh, I thought we, I should take this topic, I should cover this topic, okay. So I hope all you will join me. So that you can understand in very deep way. And I am going to discuss today about uh, role of chromodomain. Chromodomain, बहुत सारे in short का मैंने देखा. अभी कल ही मैं एक वीडियो देख रहा था. So they were telling very wrong about the chromodomain and chromodomain. So I am not going to discuss in detail. आप खुद ही समझदार हो. आपको लेक्चर की बात पता लग जाएगा कि how many YouTubers are giving you the wrong information. Okay, so uh, I will suggest you to please check their uh, PhD and uh, if they are not PhD in respective subject like life sciences or biotechnology, you should abide them because what are you telling you, if you have read it once, that will be a huge mistake, that will be a uh, big problematic for you. Okay. So I hope ki aapko aaj ka session bahut achcha lagega and uh, you will not have any problem, okay? So let us start. About the covalent modification study, I have discussed a lot of things. So phosphorylation, uh, once again, I am going to revise that thing. Kya kya covalent modification possible hai? Covalent modification ki humne bahut saare classification diye the yesterday you know phosphorylation right so phosphorylation kaise hota hai already we have discussed aap kal ka video dekh sakte ho phosphorylation by donor molecule is atp and enzyme i have given discussed in detail about glycogen phosphorylation so glucose homeostasis they have role in glucose homeostasis energy transduction and acetylation uh, study we were discussing the donor molecule is of course ester coenzyme and of course the target protein is histone and uh, basically they are affecting dna packing and transcription so if you're talking about the meristylation the obvious donor molecule is meristyl coenzyme src protein and they have role in signal transaction and obviously uh, next, uh, we discussed yesterday about the ADP ribosylation. You know the detail how this is going on and uh, what are the effects. So you can see my previous lecture, yesterday lecture. Okay. So good evening, all friends who join me, who are, who are watching me. I welcome you to Merit Life Sciences. I am Dr. Silendra Bhatt and uh, I did PhD 
in biotechnology from Banaras Hindu University in 2007 in biotechnology. Okay. So I hope you will enjoy my session and the video will be very long because this is an academic video and if you are looking for your selection, if you are serious, if really you want to excel, then you must go beyond the knowledge. Some more discussion will be there. So if something left, we will discuss uh, tomorrow. Monday to Friday is live session from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. every day. So you can join me. ठीक है हिंदी में भी लैंग्वेज रहता है सो दैट कि जो हिंदी समझने वाले बच्चे हैं उनके लिए भी थोड़ा इजी हो जाए एंड ऑलमोस्ट टर्मिनोलॉजी विल बी इन इंग्लिश एंड व्हाटएवर द एक्सप्लेनेशन विल बी इन द डुअल लैंग्वेज इंग्लिश एज वेल एज हिंदी सो आई होप यू विल एंजॉय द सेशन एंड वी विल डिस्कस ऑल दीज इफेक्ट वन बाय वन सल्फेशन यूबिकुटनाइजेशन ये सारा हम डिस्कस करेंगे फार्मोलेशन सारा डिस्कस करेंगे तो आज का टॉपिक हमने लिया है कि हाउ द हिस्टोन इज गोइंग टू बी एक्टिवेटेड आई वॉन्ट टू शो यू वन एग्जाम्पल यू कैन सी दिस यू कैन सी देर इज ए टू काइंड ऑफ हिस्टोन यू कैन सी एंड दिस इज पिक्चर टेकन फ्रॉम लोडिस ओके नाउ यू कैन सी हेयर वन इज द डी कंडेंस फॉर्म नाउ यू कैन सी वॉट इज द एफेक्ट हेयर दिस इज बीट्स एंड स्ट्रिंग्स Beats on string. This is a string of DNA, right? A string of DNA. And uh, now you will see. This is the condensed form. Second form is a condensed form. Now in the condensed form, what is the best feature? They are resistant to DNAs. And if they are in the decondensed form, they are open to DNA is excellent. So now you can see this is the 14 day erythroblast and this is the early genes and in the condensed form it's a very difficult to digest by the DNAs. Any gene modification is not possible. If they are open, they are decondensed, transcription is possible, translation is possible because expression is going on and even the DNAs digestion is possible. So hello friends. Hello guys, uh, hello all CSIR aspirants. Again, welcome to Merit Life Sciences, and uh, we are discuss discussing today about the acetylation and deacetylation mechanism by which there is a histone modification. Okay, so please subscribe if you like the video so that. Uh, you can see all the updates and I suggest you to go through all the videos related to this so that you may have the variation of the knowledge. Now, you will see who is right and who is wrong. You will have a critical thinking about the stylization, the stylization, histone modification. So, let us begin with the definition. What is acetylation, histone modification? And if you will see the literature, a lot of literature I have searched and I found that histone acetylation is a critical epigenetic modification that changes chromatin architecture and regulate the gene expression and how they are regulating gene expression actually the chromatin structure is present in the condensed form and before the now you can see here they are in the condensed form before the transcription begin they should open that is the function of acetylation acetylation making the histone active and uh, opening the chromatin structure so that transcription may proceed and that's why they play very essential role in cell cycle progression right they play very essential role in cell cycle progression and differentiation we will discuss how now you can see, you can look at this picture that shows what? That shows a lot of modification in different colors. I have, you can see methylation in the black color, red acetylation, ubiquitinization in green, and almost yellowish color in the phosphorylation. So octomers are there, histone octomers, you might be knowing how nucleosome is going to form. 
nucleosome is going to form by the octomers S2A, S2B, S3 and S4. And this is the structure of closed chromatin when the nucleosome is almost condensed. And uh, when the enzyme HAT is there, acetyl transferase is there, then there is a relaxation in the chromatin structure. Now you can see there is a extensive acetylation over certain amino acid and that's why there is an opening of chromatin. How, what is the logic behind opening the chromatin? We will understand today. And again, if the, if the process is completed, transcription is completed, cell differentiation is completed, cell cycle is completed, then again decondensation uh, is required and there is another enzyme present in vivo in the cell that is SDAC. Histone deacetylase. Acetylase enzyme, acetyl transferase, and deacetylase means removal of acetyl coenzyme. So that's the cycle that's going on. Before the start of transcription, what's going on? Before the start of transcription, closed chromatin is going to be acetylated. And if they acetylated, they have an open chromatin structure. If they are deacetylated, then they have the closed chromatin structure. So I think this point is clear. Now, a stone acetylation, why? Why this is going on? Because this is an essential part of gene regulation. If gene has to be regulated, if gene has to be expressed, then there must be proper stone acetylation and deacetylation. If this is not going on, then there will be no gene regulation. So the question arises where acetylation and deacetylation process occurs. So they are going to occur at a specific amino acid residues and that is the lysine residue. And you know already there is a N terminal there is a N terminal. So, till the N terminal, there are so many amino acid residues and N terminal is protruding from the histone core of the nucleosome and that histone that are protruded from the nucleosome, that are exposed from the nucleosome, they are having the exposed amino acid this is N terminal, amino acid, amino acid, and they are the exposed from the nucleus. No. So they are going to be acetylated. Right? They are going to be acetylated. This is nucleosome. Okay. So condensed form nucleosome. There is a protruding N. This is the N terminal. And these amino acid, especially the lysine lysine residue are more prone to acetylation okay uh, either acetylation or deacetylation so there are two enzymes for acetylation and deacetylation for acetylation the HAT acetyl acetyl transferase for acetylation acetylation and other is HDAC so what is the function of HDAC? This is histone deacetylase. Deacetylase, you can remember. Deacetylase. And both are present in the cells. Acetylation is the process where an acetyl function group is transferred from one molecule to another. Deacetylation is simply the reverse reaction when a acetyl group is removed from a molecule. Especially the acetyl coenzyme A is going to be transferred and they are very relevant for the epigenetic modification. What is the epigenetic modification? Epigenetic alteration refers to the chemical or physical modification that affects gene accessibility, thus regulating how genes are read and expressed without changing the DNA sequence. These modifications are both heritable and reversible. So some 
modification are also there that are life changing alteration they are not going to be changed and there are some modification which are heritable and reversible they can be changed the epigenetic modification work in conjunction with genetic regulation to determine cellular properties and <clears throat> so what we can conclude that these modification are essential these modification are heritable these modification bring some changes at the dna level so how the gene is how the gene is epigenetically regulated that is a question if you want to gene to be regulated epigenetically epigenetic regulation then the dna must go by dna methylation chromatin remodeling and via non coding rna so there are how many mechanism three mechanism dna methylation chromatin remodeling and non coding rna so these are the way of genetic silencing you can say genetic modification also so dna methylation especially involved in the genetic silencing. and if methyl group is added then gene going to be silent and what is the chromatin remodeling chromatin modeling regulates expression by tightening and loosening chromatin structure. Anyone there? Hello? Anyone watching me live? Am I audible? Hello? Am I audible, Bata? Hello? If I'm audible, please tell me. Hello? 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 So, Hello. Hello. So just wait. Coming back. Have any question? Okay, friends, I'm back now. Hello. So, uh, once again, we are going to discuss. So, acetylation is the process where an acetyl function group is transferred from one group to another. So, we are discussing epigenetic modification, right? So, we are not going to discuss much detail about the genetic modification epigenetic regulation but certainly in the syllabus you should know about the role of dna methylation which causing the dna silencing chromatin remodeling you have heard might have heard chromatin remodeling that regulate expression by tightening and loosening chromatin structure this is a kind of chromatin remodeling. okay so non-coding rna attaching to the complementary sequences that's result in silencing of the gene adding methyl group to cytosine in the dna sequence that is a part of dna uh, silencing a chromatin remodeling tightening and loosening that's also a ki kind of uh, chromatin um, uh, sorry gene silencing because if the uh, uh, gene is very tight 
DNA is very tight under the nucleosomal structure. They are not going to express itself. They are silent. And if they are loosening, they are going to express themselves. Yeah. Similarly, the non-coding RNA, the complementary sequences are there. And uh, whenever the RNA is going to made and RNA uh, complementary copy is going to attach, then what is happening? They are going to make the silence, make them silent. The epigenetic modification work in coordination with each other to regulate gene expression. So another thing is their DNA methyl transfer, DNMT. DNA and DNMT regulate the DNA methylation in cells. Okay. Chromatin remodeling is primary, primarily carried out. Procovalent to histone modification by enzyme such as HAT, HDAC, methyl transferase and PAN. So remember these four enzymes that is involved in the covalent histone modification. How many enzymes? Four enzymes. First is the HAT, histone acetyl transferase, HDAC, deacetylase, methyl transferase is the third enzyme and kinase is the fourth enzyme. There are four enzymes involved in the covalent histone modification. Will you remember this? If you have any question, you can leave a comment. Right? Hello. Hello, anyone watching there? Okay. So non-coding RNA include SIRNA. This has been asked many times in the examination, many examinations. Uh, SIRNA, MIRNA, IRNA, and long non-coding RNA. Right? These are the non-coding RNA. They modify the gene by inducing transcriptional gene size. So, how many non-coding RNA? SIRNA 1, MIRNA 2, IRNA 3, and uh, there is a long non-coding RNA. These are four type of non-coding RNA. So it is clear, I think. I should repeat. The gene are epigenetically regulated by the four mechanism. What are the four mechanism? Uh, that is involved in the gene silencing. There are non-coding RNA, chromatin remodeling. There are four enzymes: HAT, HDAC, methyl transferase, kinase, uh, and uh, uh, obviously DNMT, DNA methyl transferase, regulate the DNA methylation. And methylation occur where? Uh, methylation occur at the cytosine in the DNA. That involved in the gene silencing. Chromatin re remodeling. Helps in the tightening and loosening of the structure. I have told you there are four enzymes: HAT, HDAC, methyl transferase, kinase. Of course, we have to know that four enzymes are HAT, HDAC, methyl transferase, kinase. So, what do they do? They work on tightening and loosening of the structure. If the chromatin structure is tight, then it won't express. If it is loose, then it will express. So, loose work they do is acetylation. HDAC, which is acetylation, will tighten it. मिथाइलेशन जो होगा वो अलग काम करेगा कुछ प्रोटीन ब्रोमोडोमैन ब्रोमोडोमैन है क्रोमोडोमैन है उनको इनवाइट करेंगे तो आपको याद रखना कि मोस्ट ऑफ द यूट्यूब में एक लफ्ज बताया गया है जो एक्टिव और इनएक्टिव दो तरह की क्रोमेटिन इनएक्टिव क्रोमो क्रोमेटिन को आ, कभी भी ब्रोमोडोमैन नहीं बाइंड करेगा ब्रोमोडोमैन हमेशा बाइंड करेगा जो प्रोटीन होती है वो बाइंड करेगा किसको एक्टिव क्रोमेटिन इसके बारे में हम डिस्कस करेंगे और जो क्रोमोडोमाइन है उसका अलग काम वो इनएक्टिव को बाइंड करेगा और जब मिथाइलेशन हो जाएगी लाइसिन पे एसिटाइलेशन हो जाएगी मिथाइलेशन पे और सॉरी आर्जिनाइन पे बिकॉज ये सारे जो अमाइनो एसिड है यूकेंसी मिथाइलेशन एसिटाइलेशन यूकेशन फास्ट प्लस ये चारों तरह के मकैनिक तो रिलैक्सेशन इज द पार्ट ऑफ एसिटाइलेशन मिथाइलेशन का अलग काम है मिथाइलेशन क्यों होती है जीन साइलेंस करने के लिए होती है एफिजेंटिक का मॉडिफिकेशन है वो हम डिस्कस करेंगे डिटेल में तो लेट अस स्टार्ट विद द हिस्टोन एसिटाइलेशन द हिस्टोन एसिटाइलेशन वाज फर्स्ट आइडेंटिफाइड इन 1964 जब 1964 में फर्स्ट टाइम ये पता चला कि हिस्टोन पे जो अमाइनो एसिड है लाइसिन उस पे एक ग्रुप जाके अटैच हो रहा है Before the transcription, that is acetyl group. और ये acetyl group वहाँ पे bind हो रहा है, उस amino acid पे bind हो रहा है, जब that is exposed, जो कि exposed है, जो कि nucleosome के बाहर है, जो कि निकला हुआ है histone tail के रूप में, end terminal पे याद रखना, end terminal पे, ठीक है ना? 
तो वॉट इज हैपनिंग दिस इज यूजली एसोसिएटेड विद ट्रांसक्रिप्शन एक्टिवेशन एंड इज मॉडुलेटेड बाई टू अपोजिंग ग्रुप ऑफ एंजाइम एसिटाइल एसटाइल ट्रांसफरेज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर एडिंग एसिटाइल ग्रुप हिस्स टोन डी एसिटाइल इज दैट रिमूव दैम तो वॉट इज द एच ए टी रोल ऑफ एच ए टी एच ए टी बहुत सारे तरह के होते हैं देर आर थर्टी टाइप ऑफ एच ए टी हैव बीन आइडेंटिफाइड इन द ह्यूमन बींग अब बेसिकली अगर क्लासीफाई करें तो वी कैन क्लासीफाई दिमेन टू द टू फॉर्म टाइप ए एंड टाइप बी जो टाइप ए होगा दैट आर लोकलाइज इन द न्यूक्लियस वाइल टाइप बी इज फाउंड इन द साइटोप्लाज टाइप ए एच ए टी फंक्शन इन ट्रांसक्रिप्शन रिलेटेड हिस्ट्रोन एसटाइलेशन इन द क्रोमेटीन वाइल टाइप बी एच ए टी एसटाइलेट्स न्यूली सिंथसाइज हिस्ट्रोन एंड इन्फ्लुएंस द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ न्यूक्लियन तो ये बेसिक डिफरेंस है टाइप ए फंक्शन इन ट्रांसक्रिप्शन रिलेटेड हिस्टोन स्टाइलेशन इन क्रोमेटीन टाइप बी न्यूली सेंसाइज हिस्टोन में उनके स्ट्रक्चर को रेगुलेट करें राइट तो ऑलरेडी यू नो वॉट इज द रोल ऑफ एच ए टी एच ए टी डी रेगुलेट हो जाए तो क्या हो सकता है कैंसर हो सकता है सेल साइकिल डी कंट्रोल हो जाएगी तो अगर आपने पढ़ा होगा नहीं भी पढ़ा होगा तो भी ये जान लीजिए कि देर इज ए सी बी पी पी थ्री हंड्रेड जो कि रिस्पॉन्सिबल होता है जीवन फेज की सेल साइकिल को एस फेज में जाने के लिए कौन सा सी बी पी पी थ्री हंड्रेड का एस इसको नोट कर लीजिए कि जब भी आप मेरा क्लास अटेंड करिए एक नोटबुक रखा करिए क्योंकि इसमें हायर इन्फॉर्मेशन देंगे इसका नाम ही है एडवांस क्लासेस ठीक है ना तो इसको आप देख लीजिए कैंसर कैसे कैंसर एंड सेल साइकिल को कंट्रोल करता है तो दैट इज़ इम्पॉर्टेंट तो अभी हम आ, फिर से बैक होते हैं इसी के साथ कि हाउ एसिटाइलेशन कंट्रोल्स चल साइक हाई अगेन आई एम डॉक्टर सिलेन आई एम बैक एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस कि हाउ एसिटाइलेशन इज एसोसिएटेड विद द कैंसर फॉर्मेशन Okay, if you have any question, you can come into the live box, live chat box. You can leave your message, your comment. आपको जो भी अच्छा बुरा कमेंट है वो आप छोड़ सकते हैं इस पर एंड अपना नंबर अगर छोड़ेंगे तो वी कैन कॉल बैक अगर मेरा नंबर चाहिए तो आपको मिल जाएगा व्हाट्सएप नंबर और व्हाट्सएप नंबर लिख सकते हो एट डबल फाइव सिक्स जीरो नाइन टू सिक्स टू जीरो तो वो हम आपको दे सकते हैं तो थोड़ा सा डिस्कस करते हैं कि हाउ एच ए टी इज रिलेटेड विद द कैंसर फॉर्मेशन तो आपको पता है सी बी पी पी थ्री हंड्रेड डायरेक्टली दे आर कंट्रोलिंग द ट्रांजिशन ऑफ सेल फ्रॉम जी वन टू एस स्टेज इन द सेल साइकिल एंड दैट्स वाई दे कैन फंक्शन एज आइदर ट्यूमर सप्रेशर और आंकोजिन डिपेंडिंग ऑन इट्स तो एच डिस्टर्ब होगा तो कैंसर हो सी बी पी पी थ्री हंड्रेड डिस्टर्ब होगा तो कैंसर हो एक्चुअली में अगर पी थ्री हंड्रेड को इनिबिट कर दें सेल साइकिल में तो दैट इंड्यूस द एपोपोज इट इनिबिट द रिस्पॉन्स टू डैमेज इन मेलानोमा सेल्स एंड एच ए टी है वेरियस रोल इन स्टेम सेल फंक्शन ऑल्सो डेवलपमेंट एंड एच ए टी आर रिवर्सिबल रेगुलेटर एंड आर इन्वॉल्व इन द सेल साइकिल Progression. They are being studied as target for tumor growth management. Okay, na? So histone S two A, S two B, S three, S four, non histone. You can see that is P fifty three and F kappa B U B F and uh, H A T auto stylization and this non histone. They are destylated. So actually, this diagram is showing how by histone acetyl transferase we can activate and use it as therapeutic agents. So this figure was uploaded by the Frederick Blank on the research gate. So I am using that. Thanks, Blank, for sending me these pictures for the. That's great. And uh, other guys, 
can you should create a research gear profile if you want to be a scientist if you want to get some latest uh, information and if you are active in groups then you can find a lot of useful information over that so now you can see this is the histone octomers okay s2a twice s2b twice and s3 and s4 you can see there is a mostly modification at s3 or s4 since s2a s2b they are the heteromers they are made up of two different molecules s3 is the homomers s4 homomers so they are dimers exactly you can see s3 dimer s4 dimers so these tetramers are going to interact with the s2a s2b and that's why the beautiful structure you can see that is octomer nucleus of octomers and now i can show you there are various level of modification uh, at his tone cell you can see very little modification in scope as s2 and s2 b while s3 and s4 have the long tails and they can be modified okay so with the yellow color you can see the phosphorylation ma methylation ac acetylation and ub so you can see the heavy acetylation over the s3 and s4 here what you can see you can see heavy acetylation heavy acetylation at the histone cell s3 and s4 especially heavy methylation at s3 you can see as compared to acetylation heavy acetylation at s4 so this is also a key point you should remember if each histone is going to be AB acetylated, which histone is going to be AB methylated, they both have the consequences. If RG9 is so acetyl. Acetyl means negative charge. We are positive charge. We are neutralizing the positive charge. positive charge is neutralizing the positive charge. tight structure is not going to be electrostatic interaction. Ki because DNA pe negative charge hota hai, and the histone bind kiya hua hai because of positive charge of strong positive charge of arginine. Ab usi arginine ko agar aap acetylate karte rahe, so overall charge will be neutral. And if the overall charge is neutral, very simple logic, they are going to have the loosening effect. That's why you can see H4 basically heavy acetylated hai. Methylation hoga to wo alag hoga, gene silencing karega ho. कैसे होता है प्रोमोडोमेन कैसे आता है कैसे बाइंड करता है प्रोमोडोमेन का क्या रोल है ये सब गलत बताया जा रहा है मैं एक लिटरेचर शेयर करूंगा बहुत ही यूजफुल लिटरेचर होगा आप मेरे से व्हाट्सएप में मांग सकते हो लिटरेचर राइट बहुत ही बढ़िया लिटरेचर और वहीं से मैंने कुछ चीजें यहां से ली हैं नाउ यू कैन सी प्रोमेटिन is not transcribing when they remain in the condensed form. Jab bhi condensed form mein hoga, promoting kabhi bhi transcribe nahi karega. Now you can see, this is the 3D structure of the chromatin, right, in the different positions, actually crystallography structure, how the DNA and protein, because nucleosome is made up of both DNA and protein. So DNA and protein ki interaction ko hi weak karna hai. Yehi hai, acetylation. Destylation weak, destylation free tight. So, loosening and tightening effect is the part of chromatin remodeling and it results in gene activation. Means there are two types of gene, euchromatin and heterochromatin, you might have heard. Right? So, chromatin exists in both forms, extended and condensed form. So, histone, the most abundant protein. The most abundant protein in chromatin family of small basic proteins because they are rich in arginines. So that's why they are basic proteins. Histone is the most abundant protein in chromatin. And there are five major types of histone. How much? Five. H1, H1, H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. And that's why they are basic amino acids because they are they have to provide the positive charge that can 
have a strong electrostatic interaction and they can bind the phosphate group of DNA. So what happens when there is a low salt concentration, no Mg, then what happens? Obviously, the nucleosome is going to open. And when they are going to open, how it looks like? You can see how they are looks like. They are looks like simply bead on. They simply look like bead on stem. You can see the structure here. Bead on stem. Okay. So bead on stem means they have openness. In the condensed form, they will be having the 30 nanometer diameter. In the bead in string form, they have the 10 nanometer. 10 nanometer fiber means they have open. 30 nanometer fiber means they have condensed. Okay. So I hope if this is clear to you. And if you have any doubt, you can contact me via WhatsApp. You can visit my website www.mlstutorial.co.in. So guys, watch till end, you will enjoy the session, very clear and no one will make you understand so much about the nucleosome. So nucleosome is the soul of life, how it is soul of life, because there is a continuous activation and deactivation and how it is going to open. We, what are the connectors that connect the bead? When the nucleosome is going to open and having the diameter of 10 nanometer, then how it's going to open and who is going to connect? So there is a DNA stand, sting, DNA stand, sting is going to attach the bead like stem. And DNA component can be digested now by the nucleus enzyme because now there is an opening of nucleosome. Nucleosome, exactly what? They are the histone core protein plus DNA. And histone arctomers look like disc shape. Okay. So already I have discussed because of positive charges helping a strong binding of DNA with the protein. Histone protein. Okay. So that's why histone are kind of basic proteins. So already you can see 30 nanometer diameter I have discussed in the condensed form. And if they are opening they have more wider structure, 10 nanometer. And uh, extensive is dilation result in the opening. And if they are opening nucleosome structure, then they are called as activated. So there is a combination of modification required. You, you can see uh, only acetylation is not going to make them active. Series of acetylation you can see over the S2, S2B, right? And then S3, S3, you can see basic target is there, mixed type of modification means phosphorylation is there, methylation is there, acetylation is there, all type of modification. H4 is heavily acetylated and it also is phosphorylated, methylated, then 3 acetylation, 4 acetylation, then again phosphorylation, then methylation, so such kind of modification. So, guys, look with the research perspective. There is extensive multiple, not of only acetylation, methylation is also there, phosphorylation is also there, and ubiquinides. All they have something specific role, but since we are focusing on the acetylation, so we will talk about that. So, if you are talking about the histone acetylation, histone acetylation, so actually the tail is modified, and the complete tail is not going to modify it. Actually, whatever the arginine lysine these are the main target and especially if you will uh, see if which amino acid basically should be neutralized by the acetylation and that is especially the H4 lysine at 16th position they should be modified because they are important for making them fold into the compact 30 nanometer fiber and if you are inactivating or deacetylating the H4 lysine 16, then you can have the major effect. So, these acetylation loosening the positive charges, and that's why they uh, result in loose condensation. And if they are having the loose condensation, this conformation is now more conducive for transcription and replication. 
So guys, histonecetylation at H4 lysine is very, very important. I have told you. Now, what is the role of bromodomain? Bromodomain protein involved in diverse range of function, such as acetylating histone, remodeling chromatin, and recruiting other factor that is necessary for transport. This is higher level of discussion. Role of bromodomain. No one will tell you how the bromodomain is playing role in. This is the from the recent researches. You will see uh, at the Google Scholar, then you will find the role of bromodromine in acetylating stone, remodeling chromatin, and regulating other factors that is necessary for transcription. So these proteins thus play critical role in regulation of transcription. And uh, you will be surprised to know if there is no bromine in the bromodomain. Rather than it, the name was itself connected with the name of Brahma, that is Hindu God. Okay? And uh, no Hindu was involved in naming this Bromodoman from Brahma. There was another scientist, Tumkul, Tumkul that uh, kept this name because of unique life giving mechanism that is the activation of gene. Okay? So they are not related to the Brahma. But its name is Bromodom. And if you will see, there are two kinds of structure in the same nucleus, euchromatin and heterochromatin. What is the difference between euchromatin and heterochromatin? You will see. You will see, uh, light stain material is uh, euchromatin. You cannot see very clear structure. And another structure is the dark stain structure, that is heterochromatin. Because of difference in S3 modifications are not there. Note that difference in euchromatin and heterochromatin is because of S3 modification. There are two modifications, H4 modification that is related to the acetylation, loosening and tightening, while staining effect is because of S3 modification there. Right? So, this is also giving the same, some effect of activation and deactivates. Okay. So, heterochromatin you can see uh, at 9 position S3 is methylated, right, and S27 is methylated, making them condensed or inactive, while euchromatin is now active and open. So, why they are active and open? Because uh, fourth position, methylation, uh, ninth position, acetylation, 10th position phosphorylation, 14 acetylation, 18th acetylation, 27th acetylation. Now methylation making them condemn because they are increasing the positive charge. That's why the more tightening effect. Acetylation increasing the negative charge, neutralizing the effect. And that's why 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 acetylation there at 9 position, 14, 18, and 27. Remember, 9, 14, 18, and 27. And that's making them open. And that is called as the euchromatic. Okay. So, uh, we will discuss tomorrow about the chromodomain role and uh, more about the bromodomain. And I am again saying a lot of wrong information floating for the internet. Okay. So, we will understand in more detail about the metabolic cycle of crystal coenzyme A role of promodomain, role of promodomain, and how HAT HDC balance is made, what are the different classes of histone deacetylase, and how they are functioning, right? So, some question, uh, more question can be asked in near future in the CSIR, DBT, and especially if you are interested in the cell biology research, then understanding of these things are very very so with this message hi guys thank you bye bye i'm stopping my lecture and uh, please don't forget to subscribe for the latest notification and watch every video till end two to three times share with your friends okay so that all should get benefit totally i am giving the free lecture the
so if you like if you have if the video has some qualities and if you are achieving your goal goal in clearing out the csir dbt various examination and the researches then please like and share and also leave your good comments that will be the motivator thank you guys good night bye bye